John here guys and today we're talking about the Runcam HD split that's right the DJI HD recording device that allows you to get HD video without an external action cam that's right it's just a third layer that sits on top of your Vista puts an SD card into it and allows you to record beautiful HD footage directly onto the unit itself so we're going to take this thing for a little bit of a test drive and see because there is a catch there's always a catch isn't it and the catch is that you have to use Runcam's HD camera in order to interface with the system itself and the other catch is it adds a component of latency that's right it's already a 60 fps uh, lower style latency camera and this adds an additional bit of latency supposedly all the way up to 90 milliseconds is that going to be too much to fly at the night spot cam split hd now it does require this specific camera that comes with the kit now there's two components to the kit that you can buy you can buy just the camera and the little dvr that sits up top back here and that's 99 dollars or you can get it with the vista unit as well and then it'll cost you 169 i believe that also comes with an antenna right now i'm just using this little axis stubby that is well used but i had it sitting around uh the other thing that i really like about it is that it comes with this tiny little nd filter check this thing out it looks like something from a movie studio slap that bad boy onto the front now you have a little bit of extra protection but most importantly you have nd 16 filtering uh, this is basically just what it looks like a little sunglasses for your quad to be able to maintain those nice 60 degree frame rates even in bright sunlight now, as you can see, this makes your Vista piece three layers tall. So you got the Vista mounted down below there. The holes in this are actually threaded, so you don't need nuts on top, which is kind of nice. The heat sink ends up going towards the heat sink of this, as well the way I did it with the SD card on top to make it easily accessible. I put this into the Bang God by Catalyst Machine Works, one of my favorite freestyle frames. It is a little tricky in order to get that SD card out. I had to use this specialty little set of locking tweezers and you basically have to have the skills of a surgeon in order to get this thing in and out. It feels like you're playing a game of operation. Gotta call me horse. operation. One of the things that I do like about this setup is that it basically auto records as soon as you supply power. Once you power the quad up, you can see that the little red record light is blinking. That means it is recording. You have a couple of different resolutions to pick from, uh, but the best one on there is going to be 2.7K at 60 frames per second. Now, the camera that you do have to choose with this, the little run cam split camera, is a DJI 60 frame per second camera. So it's the lower latency variety. Normally, I wouldn't put this on a five inch quad, but I really wanted to test the latency. The latency testing is because this unit introduces a little bit more latency than normal. So you had half frame rate on DJI, which means a little bit more lag, but then you're also sending the camera signal through the DVR first before it actually goes out to the Vista to get broadcasted to your goggles. That introduces a little bit more latency that's supposedly measured all the way up to about 90 milliseconds of latency now you run your regular vista cables to your vista like this and then that cable then has a little thing that goes to the camera cable under there and the camera actually goes to the dvr like i mentioned the other thing is it also requires its own power source now it does come with this little power lead already soldered up to it and this little thing here that you can install to a 5 volt on your flight controller it does take 5 volts so then you i do like that it has this little connector so if i needed to do something with it or solder or get this out of the way i can just unplug it like that 90 milliseconds of latency that seems like kind of a lot just to give you a comparison dji at the lowest is usually around 25 30 
Uh, the 60 frame per second is going to have a little bit more lag in there. A good analog setup could be as low as 15 or 20 milliseconds of latency. So this is quite a bit laggier. That's why I wanted to put it on a 5 inch and freestyle it around to see how laggy it is. Is it even flyable? Is it worth it to save the 50 or 60 grams in order to only add 10 grams to your quad in order to record in 2.7K? Or are you better off using something like the Runcam 5 4K? Now they both cost about a hundred buckaronis, but this one means that you're gonna have much higher latency. Now, as you can see, it is quote, quote, flyable on a five inch, but you really gotta be going cruising speeds. The only reason that I'm able to hit any of the gaps at this spot is because I fly at the ninth spot all the time and I know all the ins and outs. I made a comment to Joe Mama that if this was a place that I was unfamiliar with, I probably would not be able to fly in this way. I'd have to go even slower. So you can, um, if you have the good muscle memory and you're familiar with the spot, fly in a place like that, I would suggest that you probably put this on something like a slower quad, maybe a three inch, three and a half inch. That would be a good way where you want to save a little bit of weight. But Runcam has also come out with a new thumb camera that we'll be checking out very soon. Kind of a smaller, cheaper, almost disposable uh, camera like an Insta360. And that only costs like 50 bucks. And I think it also weighs close to like 10 or 12 grams. So Runcam has got you covered. If you want a tiny little camera you can attach, you can use the thumb if you want a small camera that you only have to add a single layer and not actually mount anything you can use the split hd and it is doable with five inch although i would recommend you do something a bit smaller something like this shocker light uh, three and a half inch would work perfect i believe there is enough room to get that third layer in the back and then you don't have to worry about mounting a camera. You're gonna be going a little bit smaller in a three and a half inch than you would on a five inch anyway. So that extra latency is not gonna be as big of a problem, but make it a mistake. It's the maximum latency possible. It's flyable. Some people are gonna call it unflyable. I really wish it didn't have that. Seeing as how Runcam has options upstream and downstream, they got you covered no matter which option you wanna go with. So if you want a cheap action camera that's lightweight, go with this. If you want something built into your build, go with the Split HD. And if you wanna try something really tiny, check out that thumb.
What are you guys gonna do? What are you recording with? Do you only fly red ones on your, do you only fly red Komodos on your stuff? Are you all about that GoPro life? Are you on the GoPro 10? You got that hyper smooth upgraded version? Are you attaching a Polaroid to your quad? What are you doing? Tell me, tell me in the comments. Leave me a comment. Uh, you know, if I don't read enough comments, then my eyes don't get enough exercise and I won't be able to race anymore. So, you know, just try something like that. I don't know. Thanks, guys.